This business does hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of revenue each and every single month, but it all comes from one or two big players. And sometimes they don't pay him for up to 120 days. Could you imagine the cash flow pressures that has on the entrepreneur that runs that business? Well, I've got some top advice how he can improve his cash flow so he doesn't have those sleepless nights. Strap yourselves in, let's go. Hello campers, welcome back to Business Broadcast, podcast designed to help grow your business. We're well into the uh, 300 to 400 episode bar now. I don't even know what this is, uh, but we've done a lot of podcasts and we're now getting close to having 10 visual podcasts on our YouTube channel, on the second channel, James Sinclair Podcast. And I've got a co-host now, James Burr, who joins me today. I always bring my own round of applause wherever I go. There you don't go. worry, producer Sam will cut that out because he hates me. Um, he's a member of your staff, actually, isn't yeah, he? Still yeah, still hates me. <laughs> JB has got a podcast agency and he helps entrepreneurs, business owners grow podcasts to help grow their business. Um, and he was actually the um, person that made me do my own podcast 300 episodes ago. Some say the brain's behind it, don't they? Some, Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely sort of made me do a podcast because I was doing the a YouTube first one, he said, He's the talent body. Went, well, actually, I'm the talent. He just made me do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a fairer um, assessment. And, he, and he's marathon training. That's why he looks so ripped if you're watching him on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you're doing a lot of that, aren't you? Yeah, I'm doing, yeah, 50 odd kilometers a week, something like that. Do you know the one of the things, um, I always say this phrase, you become the average of the five people that you spend most of your time with. Yes. Now, one to one time, me and you are increasing quite greatly. Yes. So the person that I spend most of my one-to-one time with is my personal trainer, Gabs. Yeah. Michael Chudley, who makes my videos. Very fit guy. Um, my PA used to be up there, but I'm so bloody busy that you she's at the anymore. office. Yeah. But, so I don't spend hours with her. Um, that will return in a few weeks, I reckon. But spend a lot of one-to-one time with you. Yeah. And our significant others that come on the podcast. Yeah. They're not actually our significant others, but our guests. Uh, that <laughs> They're come significant on the pod- for the conversation. Yeah, they come on the podcast. And I, I think um, Chuds is very athletic. You're yeah. very athletic. You've started. Gabs is very athletic. You've my started wife, running, haven't you? My wife is, is unbelievable. She does like, like boot camps at five in the morning in the frost, doesn't she? She's And an then animal. she goes for a run. So she does boot camp, then a run, and sometimes a PT session in one day. Does she? She, oh, she looks amazing. Um, she's very beautiful and very fit and healthy, um, and I think it's. I lost you there for a minute. It sort of you sort of went misty eyed about your own wife. Yeah, That's yeah. a nice place to be, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and well, we've been together eleven years now. Yeah. She's fitter than um, than she's ever been, and it's rubbing off of me. Yeah, and I've I used to have a veranda over the toy shop, and it's shrinking. <laughs> no, it's just an extended drain pipe over yeah. the top. Yeah, so I- I'm looking forward to looking as good as you. They do um, leave the shirt alone. I knew yeah. there, was a, there was a shirt yeah. punk on, wasn't there? But I think that, that whole, like like say, the uh, you become the average, that is very, very true. And I but think that's one of the things about this podcast. Well, that's that- where I was going to segue on to. Oh, go on, you, you go. No, I was just going to say that if you listen to this podcast enough... Then we become one of your five. And I guess, I mean, we have some... Everyone that comes on, they're, the one, they're not as established as... The people that have got to the end of their journey, but they're certainly the people that yeah. are going to get there because they've bothered to say, I'm going to go on this podcast and have a chat. Yeah. Expose my business to the tens of thousands of people that listen and watch this every single month and ask the difficult questions that most people won't. I think actually just by sending in the application form to come mm. on this podcast, they're going to be the mover shakers of the world. Yeah. Well, you think just in the last couple of weeks, we got, had a guy who's doing a million quid in sort of influencer stuff, a million quid to worth of cars. Mm. And a million quid's worth of difficult subcontractor access, which we're going to talk about now. Which is my guest or our guest today. I'm going to start saying our guest because oh, they Thanks, were babes. my guests for 300 episodes. And now you can ours. sort of share with Cheers, me now. Um, he's been, this guy's only been running this business for four years, which I think is... It's pretty impressive when you hear the Started in COVID, yeah. yeah. Um, does he... I wonder what, why what is his revenue? Do you know what his revenue is? It's what, 100 and... Well, he's actually increased it since he applies. He's doing about 180 grand a month. 180 grand a month. Do you reckon he's got any team members? I reckon um, from I reckon about nine. Okay. And what know. is his challenges in his business? I reckon they would be. No, we actually do know this. Um, so challenge number one, sales. We're a business to business solution. No, challenge number two, staff and buying into the idea of growth. And challenge three, me. I'm an entrepreneur in the truest sense. Whilst it is our USP, it is also our kryptonite. Yeah. Which you a good news Superman film. He's my favourite superhero. What, Henry Cavill? Oh, Superman as a, as yeah, a hero. The, do you know the one that came out in 2011? Yeah. That was a great film with um, 
the, the that was the Lex Luthor. What's the actor that's been disgraced? <laughs> you can't say that. Sam, if you're listening to this, bleep out the word. Well, he is. I mean, you, you what can't was his say- name? Oh, I don't even know who you're talking about. Kevin Spacey, oh. he was Lex Luthor. Robbie Williams sung a song about Kevin Spacey. I bet he regrets that now, doesn't he? Did he, yeah. Well, but no, that's true. He was in trouble for doing all that sort of stuff, wasn't he? How did we get from here <laughs> to there? Anyway, yeah, but the, of course you said about Kryptonite. Oh, fine, yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. But, um, yeah, anyway. So, so Dan does construction. Construction. But challenge number one, Sals, we're a business-to-business solution. Why is that a challenge? I mean, uh, some of the best businesses I know are B2B. Why is that a problem? Maybe it's a perception of a challenge. Yeah, I don't know that's a problem. And challenge number three, being an entrepreneur. That is that? what it is, isn't it? Yeah. So staff, I think this is the interesting one. Challenge two, staff and buying into the idea and the growth. Because right. that, that I can see why in certain sectors, especially construction, why that would be a challenge. Fine. Okay. Sometimes you just have to have the right people on the bus, don't you? And if they're not, either you, a, a wise man once said, you either change the people or you change the people. <laughs> This is JB's impression of me. It's very good, isn't it? Oh. E plus M equals S. Entrepreneurship plus management equals success. Now, if they're listening to this, they're going to go, who's talking now? Everyone's going to be so confused, isn't right. they? Right, okay. I also do an over-exuberant hand, which if you're listening, you need to go to YouTube to just see the hand action. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Right, so where do we want to be in a year's time? He wants to be settled with a team that have totally bought into building the brand. Name of a great podcast, by the way. Uh, continue growth around the clients, spread in the pool of business so we are less reliant on one or two clients. Because he said a minute ago in the pre-chat chat um, that quite often these big contracting companies that he works with, they know that they can sort of battle two two or three firms off against each other and then battle down on price. So that makes kind of sense. Uh, and he said that he also wants to be, have a clear growth plan and an exit strategy in place. I don't think he means. I think you've made a little error there. Have I? Yeah, where he says, uh, "Pool of businesses, so we are less resilient on one or two clients." I think there's he's only got one or two big customers that drive most of that hundred eighty thousand of revenue. I think that's what he means. Yeah, I think, Ask he, him. I think he probably does. But then I was also said, <laughs> "What? <laughs> Just give us a, when you haven't eaten, you're very catty. Do you know that about yourself?" <laughs> I am Dan, hungry. Can you sorry? <laughs> Can you just come in here and just clear, clear up this little spat we seem to have inadvertently been having? Um, where you want to be in a year? Uh, you want to be spreading the pool of business so you're less reliant on one or two clients. Is that the kind of the situation at the moment that there's one or two big clients that sort of have a oh, have yes. too much power we, over your cash flow? Yeah, so we're completely beholden to them. If they decide that they're having a a bad quarter and they post they post bad figures, then they decide to hold on to subcontractors' money. I need to be spread across the board a bit more. So, yeah, I'm basically... That's good. It's 90% of my business is with a couple of big boys. Let's put him on mute. Okay, thanks, Dan. We'll come so back to you. You were right, Jim. Mate. Well done. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, this is my biggest fear, by the way, for businesses. I've had loads of people on the podcast, um, and this has probably come up 20 or 30 episodes. Mm. One big customer. Yeah. One big revenue driver. And if they disappear... One big threat. I, I know. What's your, what's your rule? You said you yeah, can't no more, have no more than ten percent of your revenue should ever come from any one source. So I didn't know that, but I just didn't want to do the impression of you again. <laughs> it just worries me. Yeah, how people get into. So if they do find themselves in that situation, your advice is like your job now becomes to spread that risk, like find Water other them customers. down yeah, as yeah, fast yeah. as you yeah, possibly. Yeah. Can. We don't lose. Have you them. ever? Have you ever had? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got um, one big customer in one of our companies, and we. Make sure we are watering them down. Oh, yeah. It will happen. You'll, yeah, of course. You know, you'll get this one big contract and be like, wow, this is really Sometimes good. Sometimes you don't realise, even do you, yeah, you yeah. add more and more services. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah. well, actually, these are making up quite a lot. You look of after them. They yeah, love yeah. you. So they spend more with you. They trust you. They do more with you. But you never know if they get sold out yeah. to another company that's got that in house, then that's you gone. Yeah. Um, if, um, you know, a new MD comes in and says we want to do it in house, or we want to go to this other company that I use. You, you can never ever be sure. No, that's why one is the worst number in business. One, one key customer, one key lieutenant, one location, one revenue source. You've got to diversify. It's yeah. always best to have a little bit of money from a lot of people a lot of the time. So I knew that one as well. Uh, what does the business look like when it's finished? And then we're going to bring on Dan to uh, talk to us more about it. It's 12 to 15 million quid in turnover in 10 years. We'll sell the business to an EOT. I don't even know what an EOT well, is. I don't know what an EOT an is. Extraordinary terrestrial. Terrestrial. He's building, it for an, he's, he's building it for an alien. What's an EOT, Dan? Quickly. It's got enterprise, I reckon. 
Uh, no, like employee ownership. So a oh, bit like, fine. Um, yeah, I know what that is. Wanna, yeah, yeah. want to want to do something like John Lewis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fine, I thought it was like that's a, it. a employee construction. ownership trust. That's what that is, and that's very tax efficient for Dan to do that. Oh, brilliant. That's probably why he wants to do it. Can we ask him if that's why he wants Bloody to do hell, it? Bloody hell, we might as well just keep him on at this point. Yeah. Sorry, Dan, we're coming back to you. Is that why you're doing it? Because yeah. it's tax efficient. It's potentially why I'm doing it. Yeah, it depends who's listening. Fantastic, <laughs> brilliant. Thanks, Dan. We'll put you back on mute. <laughs> yeah. That was the correct answer yeah. in every sense of the word. Um, and he said, "What does it look like when he's finished? He, uh, if he does the EOT, because uh, they're asset heavy, it gives him the option to be a CEO with a great management team in place." I, I don't think he should be embarrassed about it being very tax efficient for him. He's gone out there, taken financial risk, and built a business up. Yeah. And if he wants to sell it one day to his staff which is really easy for them to have ownership over a business and very tax efficient for him. Oh, I have absolutely applaud it. Thank you for growing the UK economy. I think that's a win-win. And this it? is EOTs are not some hokey pokey tax avoiding thing. This is a very much a government yeah. supported scheme. Um, and also it covers off challenge number two, staff and buy into the idea of growth. If you're in a, if you were working for a business and you knew that in 10 years, the guy's overall plan is to sell the business to you and you have an ownership stake, yeah, yeah. how much more invested are you going to be in that business? Yeah, yeah. And it's EOTs, uh, I don't think should be, it's the John Lewis philosophy for the staff point of view. Yes. But it's way more staff having much more ownership than, you know, 10,000 John Lewis staff. I mean, but, half a percent each or whatever. But for business being. owners and entrepreneurs that, uh, are doing this it usually happens in accountancies and solicitors practice um eots are very common they sell it onto the staff yeah yeah it's yeah. like the best way to think about it is more like a management buyout yeah and banks love it uh, because they will allow you to so like shawbrooker which is a, um, a a bank that um, loves backing business will buy into this because he will stay in the back he'll still um sorry Stay like a chairman kind of yeah, role. Yeah, Dan will have some shares and will coach, and then they'll give him the money up front, which he pays zero tax on, and then the business pays it off, but then the management team have shares as well. So it's very tax efficient way of exiting your business. Nice. We'll definitely touch on that then. More tax efficient than asset business disposal relief, which I talk about a lot, formerly known as entrepreneur's relief, which is 10% on the first million, 20% after that. This i think is zero tax could you set have you got like an eot thing for any of your no stuff? but i if i had a small so friend under the bus there no 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 <laughs> uh, it's not to say that i wouldn't do it in the future with some of my businesses yeah and if i did sell something it's difficult with my my business are very capital intensive we're going to yeah. go and buy roller coasters build dinosaur parks yeah yeah um but if you're an accountancy or a solicitor's firm richer sounds done this have you heard of richer yeah, sounds yeah, the, the the uh, high street hi-fi hi -fi shop yeah, yeah. yeah. is hi-fi even a thing now i don't know you said it always sound old don't we but they sell like home cinemas they sell record players and that it's where i bought my first mini discs players to grow Do you my remember business mini disc that was a yeah. flop and a half wasn't it well i used them all the time and it's because uh, you were an entertainer yeah, the yeah, only people yeah, who used yeah, it was yeah. like cabaret singers <laughs> and clowns um but yeah yeah they they he julian richer who sold richer sounds sold his business for an eot oh really mm. how big was it as a business which sounds was it big was it and he, you know, so he got all the headlines. Oh, I've given my business or sold my business to my staff, but you know, really, he, he, you know, nice little payday tax yeah, free. Absolutely, good on you, Mister Richer. I, 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 I'm sure I'm right there. I'm just now kind of questioning myself. So, just a little caveat here for anyone that might be listening from Rich Sounds. I'm sure that's what happened, unless I'm told otherwise. <laughs> Nothing you hear in this podcast is investment advice. It's just purely for entertainment purposes only. Correct. Um, do you make the profit that you want to? If so, what? He said no. Thirty percent of the gross. And then, with final question is, what do you do day to day with your time in the business? Fight fire full stop uh, last year we've over traded so settled, that is settling down it's a painful learning curve I make myself known to all the clients and the um, clients and, and on sites I look at the overview of the figures delivered to me by my bookkeeper and I'm constantly striving to do things more efficiently difficult in an industry that does not like change some good answers yeah I would be very keen to know what his definition of over trading is I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, he's again. on now, isn't he? We? Well, yeah. Let's just get, yeah. like you're on now, full time, Dan. Hey, Dan. Welcome, right. welcome to Business Broadcast. But, but, but actually, before I ask about your over trading, can you just give listeners, in your own words, thirty seconds? What is your business? Yeah, sure. So I'm Dan Carey. I run a company called Core Four Solutions Limited. Um, we are primarily a business to business solution, uh, working for Tier One contractors, local authorities, and housing associations. Um, we started off 
primarily being a scaffold and groundwork, delivering a scaffold and groundwork solution. Um, but we've we've become known for um, some far out there projects because I get the calls what no one else wants to pick up. So we've ended up doing some um, some trickier structures work and some unique projects that probably once in a lifetime. But um, that's kind of what we're known for. So it's, it's construction industry subcontracting, but for tricky stuff that no one else really wants to touch. It, we are just, yeah, we are, I've just dressed that up. We're just basically subcontracting. But on tricky projects where other people are like, on, yeah, that's not on, a bit yeah. of us. On, yeah, unique, on unique projects, yeah. What's the most unique project you've worked on? Um, I, I mean, S- South MP, we spoke about that. That was a good one. Um, but I'm kind of, I love a structure. I love a bridge. So I've got like Marlow Bridge. That's a coal suspension bridge. That's a couple of hundred years old. Oh, nice. We worked on that. We we designed and built a scaffold and encapsulated it as we painted it. And it rocked and moved up and down with the structure. That was cool. Um, yeah, I like my sort of Victorian engineering. So anything that hark back to that. I worked on London Bridge a little while ago with a run up to London Bridge either side. That's wow. cool to work That's on cool, isn't it? Like that. I like it. Okay, so, so so talk to us about overtrading. What you said in your own words, we were overtrading. How how so? So, I was intent on I would just take on any work. We was quite good in certain areas, and then I was just taking on. You know, you'd get like a a general contractor say to you, okay, because he's good at this structure, he must be good on our building site. So then they'd flick us on a building site, and we'd say, for instance, we we done the scaffold on a new build building site so it was quite a lot of revenue but very very little profit Mm -hmm. loads of hassle it would suck resources from us and i classed that as over trading so that was just part of my sales i thought i'd take it on we give it a go but and it just didn't work what about your payment terms if you do a job for someone how long does it take to get paid i mean we're pretty much high-fiving in the office if we get paid after 60 days right and why, so you're, you're high-fiving and celebrating if you get it after 60 days. Does that mean that a lot of them are sort of pushing it to 120 and stuff to ease their yeah, own yeah, cash you'll flow? Get, you'll get, yeah, you'll get 90, 120s all day, every day, yeah. Have you Do got you, any, like, sort of comeback on those situations? Or again, because you're sort of reliant on a couple of big clients, you can't really, like, you could sort of pull the trigger of, like, hey, we're going to have to go legal or you have to pay interest on this money that you owe us, but then you're going to damage the relationship. Are you kind of in that situation? Yeah, you can't really use that one with them. Um, it you you're literally beholden to them. Mm. So if they decide that they're going to keep hold of your cash for a little while. They're going to keep hold of it. And this is so. So someone so is 120 days common. Yeah. So typically it'd be like 30 days month end. So it could be anywhere up to 60 there. Then it might be them. They might have a certification process. So it might be like the 28th of the month that they only certify invoices. Wow. And how much is the value of some of these invoices? Uh, they're all anywhere from 20 to 60, 70,000 pounds. So they're all done on like a monthly valuation. Yeah. And then how do you, how do you cash flow that if? If you're not getting paid for 120 days and you're growing the business and buying new equipment, like is that where all the overtrading stress comes in? Yeah, so that's where oh, that's where that's why I overtraded, because I thought, right, this is the thing to do. I need to put more in the top end to get more out to more out of it. But basically just putting more work in the top end just made it caused just the worst sort of cash flow scenario that you could have where at a point we literally just run out of money and we were still running. Yeah. And then it was like awkward conversations last year, but we had the awkward conversations with our suppliers and we actually got through it. Um, we didn't borrow off the bank. We couldn't borrow. Um, it's a bit of a tricky market construction. No one's really interested in it. No one wants to factor it really because no, I was about to there's, ask you, do you do that? Yeah, there's so many me? variables and you can argue. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what we looked at and that's that is what we looked at factoring. They were talking about releasing, say, sixty percent. Yeah, um, then and then the interest then, really takes all your profit away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're whittling down that you know, that net profit. Just for listeners so out, that out of the, cash flow effectively, how have we done it? 
Yeah, yeah. Just for listeners that might not know what we're talking about, when um, we was talking about factoring there or in- invoice finance, you give an invoice to a bank and they will pay you a percentage of your invoice back, and usually 90%, but in this case in construction it's 60%. Then when you get paid, you pay them off and you pay. It's expensive finance. Um, again, uh, like a previous episode, I think once you're over 10 years old, I think banks will be more sympathetic to you. And obviously you've got good clients, but this is just the way it is. You've got big businesses, FTSE 100 companies, 500 companies. They're never going to change the way they pay you. That is the world you're in. And we've now got to improve the model. I would be. I know that you said that you've got really good customers, one or two big customers that that are worth billions, some of the most wealthiest companies in the country. They're not going to change their payment terms to you. But I would try and create a smaller direct-to-consumer business where you can do scaffolding around people building houses just to give you more regular cash flow at a higher margin have you thought about that sort of stuff? So you've got like two divisions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we've started to move into um, some housing association work on yeah. the basis of they're all smaller projects. So they're all yeah. what we'd class as like a micro project, three, four grand in and out in a couple of days. Yeah. And But still, they pay well, but they pay at 30 days. I about to say they're still not so, really direct to consumer, is it? That's no, still so sort of a B two B, isn't I would, it? I would love it if someone had like a credit card. If I had like the the Charlie Mullins approach, like the Pimlico Plumbers, yeah. where people pay them up front. But I just that's the part of like this business that is so difficult with this industry. It's changing this industry because there's so many. There's cowboys out there, there's problems, but there's also cowboy customers as well as cowboy builders, you know. So there's there's all kinds of problems around it, and you've got to almost change the whole perception of the whole industry, which is slightly bigger than what I can achieve. Uh, yeah, that, that that is not a challenge that's gonna be overcome easily, is it? How did you how did you get your first ever clients? You mentioned you started four years ago, you actually started during lockdown and all the sort of the COVID times. How did you, how did your first client yeah, come yeah. through the door? Um, so I, I didn't have a job, decided to start a business, which was a bit of a strange thing to do. Um, and then I just, I went out there trying to sell the dream, trying to basically, I, I do the services that I always struggled with in construction that people let me down on. So I just promised a few people, I said, look, I will do it for you. I won't let you down. And it trickled in and my first job was for, yeah, a FTSE 500 company. They believed in us, and I still work from now. What What was your background before that, Dan? I've always been in construction. Been in construction since I was fifteen. So I've always worked on building sites. I've done stints in London Underground. I've always been in this, almost this specialism in construction, false work, form work, structures. Um, yes, I've seen it. I know all the I know all the tricks. I've also seen I've worked for people that have made a lot of money from it. And your your first challenge was sales, and you said sort of sales, comma we are a business to business to solution, uh, business to business solution. And Jim Stray was like, well, I don't see that's a problem for sales by and large, just because you're B two B. What is the what is the sales process at the moment? Because it sounds like it's a sales a sales challenge first and foremost and then almost a capacity challenge thereafter so what is what would be your general like sales process or how you get in the next sort of clients that you want to you know become you know so on the, your books the industry's fraught the industry's fraught with uh, i could be competing with um a company that might not necessarily be able to do exactly what we can do but they might undercut us so i have a problem around you know we quote a lot of work but I have mm-hmm. a problem with winning certain contracts on the basis of people who undercut us and these contractors will always go to the cheapest because they'll make a few more quid. But that's why I think um, having some consumer and mm-hmm. council spend, even though it's 30 days, but even if you're just hiring out stuff like this, there's got to be more divisions to this that... It, you know, you know what yeah, I mean. absolutely. When I, when I set out and I was like, I just want to work on structures, 
I've realised now that I can't just work on structures because there's not that many fancy bridges around that need me to work on them. Yeah. So I've that's why we like diversified and some of the more profitable jobs that we're doing of recent times are like like some housing association works where it's like new fences, returfing gardens, basic groundwork solutions, really basic. Yeah, yeah. They're easy to staff, they're easy to manage, but the profit's right up there. Because we can react and we've got the vehicles, the lorries are set up, the yard to roll out of, so we're reactive and we can do them jobs. So how how are those um, clients coming to you then? How is how is the council coming out and finding out about you guys? So I watched a I watched a video on James Sinclair, and he said that something about he sent some balloons to a customer. Yeah, classic. And I James Sinclair playbook. <laughs> so what I done was I I send out giant pink fours with all of our social media on it and i tie like sweets onto the bottom of it or i've had my face drawn up as a cartoon and i send it on a cookie and another one of james's businesses rossi's they send them out directly to clients for me and we just say we'd love to work with you or if we've just done a job for them thanks for the business so we send out like, giant cookies with my face on all balloons and it's Do, basically are we doing that for james. you it's party pieces yeah, and do rossi do it amazing uh yeah you're doing it for me now yeah i think i've ordered four today that's Off great that's brilliant and you can do the same i see an email going right I mean, dot co dot uk. <laughs> <laughs> there we go yeah, and it's that that so it's a really unique thing because obviously a lot of so people are, have never seen that before but what they've seen before is they might get like a Fortman a mason tamper or someone say oh do you want to go shooting for the day but they've never had and it's a relative it is a really cheap thing to do for us. Yeah. And then you'll get like an area an area director will send you a photo of him smiling because he's got this cookie with your face on. It looks stupid. But yeah. it's gets us known, it's bright pink, it is you know, it's right out there. So yeah, I got that. I did get I nicked that one off James. Well, we do cakes and donuts as well, if you want any of that. We made we made um cakes for Capital FM donuts with uh, Capital FM's logo on it recently. Oh, did you? Yeah. I, I don't think they're doing the same thing as Core 4. <laughs> I feel like just throwing in a Roman Kemp yeah. digging a road up. Yeah. That sounds like a BBC yeah, dog. I don't think you've got to worry about Capital FM being your competition. <laughs> no, look, listen. You, you, I feel, do you, but you feel like you're on the right path now and knowing that you I, need to do more yeah, of these. I feel better. I, I know that I'm too much of my revenues with too many of these bigger clients. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So it is getting, but like Mrs. Smith... I, I, I can't service Mrs. Smith if she rings me and says, I want a scaffold up the front of my house. She might pay for it up front, but that's not our market. Um, do you want it to become your market? No, I don't. I, I think that we're better off with, so I have like several relationships within these, within these firms and these, these companies do repetitive work. So they know, so we haven't got to start from a, is this guy going to turn up? Is he going to do the business? Because they yeah. don't know that because that's what we do. So I like the fact that that repeats. I just need to get that. The yeah, your, your problem is, down. but you are profitable. I mean, you're making 11, 12% net profit on those big, juicy, big customers. All you need to solve and you will become more profitable as a result of it is how to get more regular cash flow. That's really the, the bit of the puzzle that you're missing, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and it's and, convincing. Like if if I didn't say that I was in construction, it would be very easy to then to factor or do something like that, or to you know to even borrow, get some sort of facility. But it is the fact that I'm in construction that it's a game full of interesting characters. There yeah. are firms that will invoice so, factor for construction, though, isn't there? Well, if he, he's you know, yeah, it's just, it's just it, the percentage is low. Yeah, the percentage is low, yeah, and, yeah. The, and it is expensive. But I, I, I would be my own factoring business doing. You know, you, you mentioned Charlie Mullins yesterday uh, earlier um, from Pimlico. You know, they don't have a cash flow problem because people are paying them straight mm -hmm. away because they're in the B to C marketplace and they've gone into the B to B marketplace recently. I, I would just be. I don't know why you don't want to do some of that stuff so that it brings you in fast cash flow because I think, and you never know who those people are and they might recommend you on to other stuff. I don't, is it just because you think it's a waste of time? I, I'm just trying to understand why you won't do it. 
some of it was operational so i've tried it in the past and then operationally say like our guys go out dressed in full orange so from the operation side of it they got their hard hats on they got their glasses on they got their earmuffs on the whole time and then what will happen is if they go and they do a job around someone's house they're all of a sudden got their top off and they become a normal tradesman yeah and then we lose the the fact that like we are professional outfit just don't let them do that no so i'm but i'm conscious of that but then they don't need all that ppe on if they're in your garden do they yeah but just have one rule for everything you know go and look at charlie mullins blimey i mean they're they're like ready for a bloody funeral or a wedding them cars and the way he's dressed he's you know there are solutions to that you just got to be hard on it look you got a choice here so but you know those jobs are profitable it's not that they're not profitable that's why you're not doing it like if you have a scaffold around a house that's being built you can make profit on that just as much as putting it around an office block is that correct yes but that's more competitive because uh, like a one-man band could do that so it's yeah, a more absolutely. competitive market no i get that but you know so yes it might be more competitive but i'm sure you could get lots of inquiries in for that what we're trying to yeah. solve is regular cash flow yes so that you're not stressed out so that you can focus on finding more profitable stuff if you don't get paid for 90 120 days and run your bank account down to zero just because these big footsie 500 100 companies just don't pay you i think you should do some more of that local authority stuff every 30 days but wouldn't you like to have a thousand pound forty thousand pound a month coming in just off of the little people each month that could just just completely game change you yeah absolutely and if you're that worried about it, you just get another lorry and a separate team to look after the B2C stuff. And why not be a point of difference where your people are super, um, you know, super... Um, top end of what top they end, do. yeah. Like Pimlico's. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd, I'd love... I love the idea of that, but it goes down to then like challenge challenge two where you've got the, you then got to have them staff have got to buy into totally what you're doing. Well, I think they will buy into it if they know that they're going to be rewarded for it, which was your next yeah. thing. You know, you say, look, guys, you just get them all together. Say, look, we've got a problem here. We've got some of the biggest companies in the world and in the country that are our customers. And I, sometimes they don't pay us for 150 days. Do you know what? It makes my blood pressure go through the roof. It's really bloody stressful. And it it gets me down and it gets the business down so here's my new idea we're going to start doing some direct to consumer stuff we're going to do nice local jobs and london jobs and go around the country but we're going to go and get a little bit of money from a lot of people a lot of the time so that we never have to go through that again and it's going to all help you because it means it's going to make the business more profitable and in the future i would like to sell the business to you guys my staff and you'll all benefit from a much better business model and tell them honestly your problems and yeah usually people go fucking hell that sounds terrible i want to help him out i think you have to lay out for these guys and say look if if we don't make these changes then you know you you guys expect your pay packet on a friday and there's been times where we've had to you know it's been close whether we can do that or not i think you have to really like lay it out as to why you're going to do it like not terrify them to the point where they don't want to come to work on a monday yeah, but yeah. but but telling them the truth and like i say but selling them on the future vision of what this is going to become um and then you also you only need a couple of great people who will tow the party line and then it makes it almost the way that you do it if that makes sense like culturally from the top down if you guys are always you know exceptional in delivering your communication to them and tell them why it's important and you know you've got a couple of your core people you because let's say you've i don't know we've got 20 30 blokes there'll be two or three of them who are like the the they're like the cool kids at school like everyone looks up to them and if you can get them to buy into it like oh you know and the young one gets out of the van and he's not going to put his ppe on he's not going to you know he's come with the, the wrong colored shirt on or whatever if someone else pulls him on it you only have to do that a few times for you to to lead with culture and do you know what uh, you know a speech an emotional speech that tells the truth and honestly mm. people buy into that so much because most companies don't do it mm. i saw you do it jim when, yeah. when covid got shut down yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll never forget that you got pulled everyone together in marsh farm on the day the day before it got locked down and you you were quite visibly like really really upset and you said look i, I i'm going to try and make sure there's something to come back to this is what we're going to try and do if we can get people back in we will 
you know, and there's been people there who'd worked there for longer than you'd owned it for. And and I think everyone who was sat in that room, that I remember taking a photo from the back of the room. I was like, everyone who sat in there in that day will work for you forever because mm-hmm. of how you communicate it. But you've got yeah. to be willing to sort of like, you know, go there. And you sound like a, you know, confident dude, Dan, and you, you sort of, I, I think people will buy into you big time. But I cannot begin to tell you how much your life will change with regular cash flow as well. My business is made up very similarly to you. You know, I've got people like Blackstone and BlackRock who are my two biggest customers. Have you heard? Do you know who those two companies are? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they are they are most of the world between the two of them. Um, and then I've got lots of little people that pay me every day. Cash flow hits my bank account, um, and then you know every now and then some of the big companies pay me then big amounts but i would not be able to sleep at night knowing that you know one two three or four people are just going to pay me when they like um you've got to make sure that you you find a way of changing the model of this business for regular cash flow because i think you know you're saying you're 11 12 percent net profit oh that's really good and with some tweaking and some management you probably get that up to 15s and 20 percents but you probably can do that easier by having regular cash flow. I mean, and maybe there's a bit of a halfway house here as well, Dan, because you've got the top tier one, you know, globally floated companies and you don't want to go to Mrs. Smith down the road for, you know, four fence panels. But maybe there is, you know, property management companies and some of the estate agency groups. So maybe you can go in and hit, you know, like one group of people that look after 10 buildings or 20 buildings. So you, it's still more closer to B to C without having to, have all of the logistical headache of dealing with individual customers if that makes sense but you know those housing yeah. associations are still uh, a bit too far removed from the consumer so maybe like say the property management companies or you know block management companies you can go and attack them with your marketing you know we, we used we've got a, a, a flat that we still own and the property management company they don't know they're ask from their elbow quite frankly but and they're so badly managed that everyone in the block hates them everyone's trying to out, now oust them and do like a yeah, do, it do like a private no, one themselves the tools, yeah. but if, if you went in and you had the solution for them if you could do the grounds the grounds keep and if you could do the access stuff for, for the roof uh, you've only got to go and get one customer who potentially looks after 80 blocks rather than going after tr- you know try to leave 80 blocks yourself if that makes sense i think that might be your halfway house yeah, yeah. So just what you're to, saying, send all them property management firms more cookies. Yeah, more yeah, cookies, absolutely. more four balloons. We've actually, saying, yeah. for the purposes yeah. of YouTube, we actually we can see now. Yeah, I will do that in a minute because I just I've got some important points to make. Just to, I've I've worked with some contracting people over over the years. I remember one guy he had an electrical contractors business. JB, 120 million turnover. I remember that. I was, wow, what money are you making from that? And he said 1.8 million a year. So that, that like single digit percentage points i said what if something goes wrong like you under quote or you know a job and the or the material prices go up he said oh that happens to loads of contractors they just go bust. and then they go bust yeah, yeah um so just be mindful i'm sure you know all this don't you that 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 can happen yeah i've worked in this industry my whole life and that is like almost like that's accepted that's the norm but mm. i try and everything that i do and that's why banks don't want to fund it. That's possible. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's yeah, yeah. why it is why uh, banks don't want to fund it. But I mean, and that's why as well. You you know you're looking at Pimlico's business model, having a little bit of people, a little bit of money from a lot of people, a lot of the time is what has kept them in the game. But if I've always thought, if you can do both, if mm. you can have consumer and business to business in groundworks construction electrical that could be a lovely business that could yeah. and i would also talk to secondary schools secondary schools are always doing big projects and head teachers know head teachers and the education sector is a good place to be yeah have you tried any big secondary schools and colleges no i haven't I don't know how you feel about this. A lot of them are academies now, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and they say there's groups of them, so again, you only have to go after them. Every time we go past one, yeah. yeah. It seemed like they're building it bigger or doing something. You know, like a, oh, we're just putting a new office block on the school. Yeah. When I was at school, at secondary school, my school always had a project on. Yeah. The whole time. Yeah. Yeah, ours did. You know, yeah, so, year eight we were in porter cabins and then yeah. we were living the life of luxury by year ten. <laughs> yeah. we, we had a potato van. We had a we had a we had a jacket potato van for our canteen. Yeah, yeah. And, and did it was you like know, a restaurant by the end. Some of it. some secondary schools have budgets of thirty million pounds for yeah. one secondary school. You know, so these are these are serious mm. businesses in effect. Okay, right. Well, um, 
that's that this is um for anyone that's watching we've got a picture of you here on the youtube channel i'll just put that there okay this one this one there we go um so this is what you have made on a cookie is it <laughs> you can't see it can you we'll have to show you on the i laptop. can't see it no, we'll, is, it, is it yeah is it my cartoon face or is it it is your cartoon here? face we'll show baby you on the camera okay. as well here you go dan so you can see yourself is that <laughs> it because yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't just, yeah, I don't just see myself. I see myself as a cookie, as a guitar plectrum, as a pen. <laughs> I, I mean, and that's, and that's a, a, sort of the, because I'm a bit of a character anyway, people like it. I don't know. They oh, seem to like it. And, and they keep you, spending you, money with you. And did you, you went and done that on party pieces, did you? And you just put it in? And like done it on the software uh, on our website. I don't know how we done it because that is Loki Marfis that does that. But yeah, well, I don't know how go. we do it. But well, thank you for your business. Um, we do personalised cards now as well. Can I do a little plug for one? Yeah, you might as well. If you yeah. go on party pieces, you can get personalised balloons, personalised cookies, personalised teddies, personalised everything, and even personalised cards. Moonpig, we're coming for you. What? I could get them one at a time. Yeah. Can I really? Yeah. Unbelievable. Where do I go to find out more information? Partypieces.co.uk. Fantastic. I love the fact you've had a live... But this goes back to the point, though. A lot of... A little bit of money, a lot of the time, from a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, Exactly yeah. what's happened. Yeah. 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 I, I think, Dan, you, like like Jimbo said, you know, the, the, the big guys are going to bring you big money, but big, head, big headache and big, big risk. You need to, you need to alleviate that risk. With some I, don't, I don't care what business owner you are, whether you're turning half a million or a billion or anywhere in between... Cash flow is the biggest stress for business owners. Yeah. Without yeah. a shadow of a doubt. It is my biggest stress even at our level. You know, because I'm like you, I'm a constant over trader. You know, oh, I just, I can get that. It'd be stressful for six months, but then it'll, it'll be, all be right. sorted. Yeah. <laughs> and then we go again, and then we go again. Um, and uh, uh, um, you just got to be careful of it. And But really what helps cash flow is having good business models like Costco, that sell their stuff 12 and a half times a year and they've sold all their stock before they've actually paid for it. You know, when you can find those little niche mm. models that set you up, the cash flow of Costco is unbelievable. Do you know they've never had to fund the growth of their business for the last 50 years? They never borrowed any money. They don't no, need... No, that's not funny, They've got it? so much money, yeah. they don't know what to do with it. So give it to me or to you. Get How many shirts could you get with Costco's fun? Cash flow power, JP. <laughs> Got quite a few, I reckon. Uh, yeah. Quite a few. Um, right, obviously, Dan, as part of coming on, you get to ask um, Jimbo some questions. I don't know if you remember the questions that you've submitted, uh, but the, as of the new format of the show, just because we've got one slightly questionable jingle, um, if you could uh, whittle down your five questions to just one question that you could ask James Sinclair to grow, scale, and develop your business to be the captain of your own ship, the master of your own destiny. What would that one question be, Dan? Uh, James, how do you continue... Um, no, hang on. You've answered that one. <laughs> For God's sake, Dan. Right, come on, the jingle again. Get on board. Just, no, but... Do the jingle again. Do the yeah. jingle again. <laughs> you can have this one instead. It's a funky quiz. Go on, Dan. Talk over the top of it. It'll sound like you're on a game show. Oh, yeah. I like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. So... Let's do, let's do about the personality. How do you continue to get your personality across um, to ensure that your staff members buy in to the continued growth of the business? Well, the, the absolute honesty now is I don't deal with that many staff. I've probably got 15 staff that I spend a lot of time with out of the 1250. Um, sorry. You can't. Oh, is that better? Um, sorry, someone's just telling me I wasn't close enough to the microphone. Executive producer, Nigel. Is it to produce an orange? We don't need you, JB, anymore. <laughs> Bye. Um, I, I really only work with 12 to 15 staff, and of that, really only five or six, um, it, quite intentionally. And, uh, you know, I think you've got to make sure you've got good management to look after the little sub-teams within your business. Um, the personality that you see on YouTube that you might see here on the podcast uh, was very much at the fourth when I started out. But, you know, I don't know even some of our managers you know you brought me my 1250 staff in i probably know 150 of them we should do that as a youtube video one day <laughs> sounds like an expensive youtube <laughs> name got... the team it'll be like a, it'll be like a mr beast video they could all skate around the arena yeah yeah we won't be doing that because it sounds very <laughs> expensive to bring everyone from all around the country just for me to do a youtube video but you know it's difficult yeah is the answer um 
Uh, but you've got to be working on innovation, marketing, and culture, those three things all the time to drive your business forward. Um, does that answer the question? Not really. I don't think I, it does. I think so, because I, I, I pull, I've pulled back a bit so people don't see me as much on the ground. So it was just that bit that, like, oh, is Dan still around? Because I'm with the clients. I'm doing other things. I'm growing the business. Mm. And it does. The, some of the feedback I get is it upsets the guys that were here from the beginning. Yeah, I think that will always be the case. One for me to manage. Yeah, when I buy a new business and I'm heavily involved for the first year and then get out, I think people will struggle with that with us. But you still go around a lot of your places, though, don't you? No, it's get... nowhere near as much as I should. Yeah, but you know that you should, and you still, you know, I see like on Saturday, like oh, you're at Lee Valley or you're at Marsh Farm or you're at different places. So you've, yeah, but, but even then, I haven't. I'm just so busy um, that I can't do that as much, and I think once you. You get you get over that. You want to be there more, but then you have a family, don't you? As well, you know. You, you, you want just. I think if you're aware of it, you'll do a better job of it. And I Mate, think that's again the, another yeah. daft thing, Dan. But like we went out at Christmas time. I think you guys went to one like a, a boom battle box bar thing. They're fantastic nights out. So if you know, could you put it in the diary? Like once a quarter, you get all of your guys together and you, you know, you buy the booze and you buy the the food and you go and throw some axes and play pool yeah, and all that yeah. kind of stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it yeah, sounds we'll daft, that. but that's that's what really like builds culture. And then if you're in the area for a sales pitch with someone, if you're within, you know, make yourself a rule. If you're within a 15 minute drive of one of your sites, you'll you'll swing past it and go and say hello to the guys that are on site mm. keep your boots yeah. in the back of the car and just just force yourself to do it what's your yeah. next question before we dash off hang on a second he loves a jingle go on dan i like i like a jingle he does love a jingle <laughs> one more question make it a good one you're running out of time dan no pressure right um <laughs> social media should i create should I be creating content on my social media and should it be like a focused content opposed to at the moment, sometimes we have some sort of random videos and stuff like that up there, but would you focus it and hone it in the explanations of what we're doing? I, my opinion on that is it depends on who your market is. If you've only got two customers and they're FTSE 500 customers, they probably don't. Here we are, have sailing down this London bridge. Look at us. Um, but if you do go direct to consumer, I think, and you feel like you're good at it and your team are good at it, and why you're, what your USP is that you really care and you go above and beyond, maybe, yeah. Um, but I, if you're direct to B2B, I would probably be focusing on SEO, um, Google Ads, um, and getting good qualified leads first. Yeah. Okay. I was just hoping to become a TikTok star. That was all. <laughs> I sort of try it at the uh, moment. Do it, you? It, it, it works yeah. for, yeah, to, no, to Jim's point, it works for B2, not... B2C. I, I'm, the, the, there's a fellow who comes into my hairdressers, right? And he's, and he's called SQ2 contractors i don't know if you've seen this fella he's got uh, about four hundred thousand. like everyone knows him now he's like a micro celebrity in our little local town in chiselhurst and he's like and he and he walked yeah. in and, oh you you're the guy who does the podcast I'm like, are you on tiktok he's like yeah, yeah i'm a builder as well and i said to him i said how much of your um because everyone else is like oh, i love the videos of it well funny i said how much of it actually translate to business now he said honestly he said we've got more leads than we know what to do with and we've turned off everything else all he does is these little tiktok explainer videos and he's flat out, non-stop. It's his only former leads now, but he's B2C. And I think to Jim's point, you know, in the B2B market, you you, you need a content strategy that's yeah. that's done a little bit differently. It's I think showing the expertise. Yeah. So, so. I think the fact you, you're working on like interesting so. projects, you know, end of bridges. You know, I'm looking at some of the, the, the amazing scaffolds that you're building, um, you know, across rivers and all this sort of stuff. I think those explainer things would be super, super valuable. You know, nice B-roll footage of that kind of stuff could be brilliant. Is it going to generate you leads in the short term? No, it's a brand but, building play. There's a difference yeah, between brand and marketing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think content marketing brings you in the best people, but it takes time to bring yeah. them in. And, I, I, and if I was bringing, if this was my business, I would absolutely be doing PPC yeah without a google. shadow of a doubt yeah google straight up google ads yeah and search engine optimization mm -hmm. without a doubt first yeah as a man that spends okay. a lot of money doing content marketing as well that would not be where i put my 
first dibs on this. Yeah. Agreed. Well, there you right. go. If anyone does own London Bridge and they want some scaffolding around it or just anything erected, where would they go? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Child. Child. Um, they could go to our website, core4s.co.uk, or you could look me up on TikTok. I do go under four man, right? So that is a four, <laughs> oh, a number yes. four, uh, yeah. and then man. And that is um, my superhero. I'm also wearing a superhero outfit on there. Uh and yeah, you can contact us via Fun. any of the platforms. There you go. So there you go. If you, if you are a business owner who's wondering, how do I get two of the biggest companies in the world to be, become our clients? Turns out you come up with a silly name and you go on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. What do we know? Because, eh? what do we know? I'll tell you, what it does is it stands out. And uh, we used to have a thing called a case study in the industry. So you'd put your case study, what you've just done. But instead of a case study where it's a little bit boring, we will put it as as like an adventure of the superhero and he'll have his sidekicks with him and we'll yeah. explain how we've done the project. There you go. I'm going to well, go and check it out. Marketing, really. Maybe I should get a job with you, James. Uh, yeah, maybe you should. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go and check it out and uh, I'm going to go and uh, do a little Instagram story with your cookies. I'm going to go into the bakery if I've got time and uh, see them being made. Oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Is there any next door to the, this building that we're in right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. No, I know. Yeah, I know. I was oh, gutted. I, I, I dusted off knows. my roller skates for today because I felt that we was actually going to be skating around oh, right. whilst we're talking this. Right, yeah, that would be difficult because <laughs> I can't roller skate. Oh, we should definitely do an episode yeah, of that, though, shouldn't we? There you go. Yeah, well, that's, thanks there we go. I'm, all, I'm here for ideas. Thank you, mate. Thanks for being on. Awesome right. stuff. Thank thanks you, mate. Thanks for your well, time. There you go. There's Dan mm. from Core 4. I thought, I thought he's full head. <laughs> That's what I was laughing. Four man. Four man. Four man. <laughs> right. Well, there you go. He's been on the business broadcast. That's good in conversation. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Cash flow is always the bloody one, and it yeah. kills everyone. Isn't it interesting though that you, because you say, and I think again, a lot of people could, you know, aspiration like, oh, I'd love to be in this position. Oh, I'd love to, you know, oh, imagine having his problems. Oh, he's got cash flow problems. But you've got. You know, like most problem, most people with cash flow, it's you know, yeah, how much he'll be juggling. Your... He'll be like thinking, Oh, I need another five, ten grand. I'm thinking, I need, I need to juggle need five hundred million, yeah, 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 or half a million. And yeah, literally half a million lasts no time for me in cash flow terms, not personally, obviously. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> such a ball, you know, like uh, big watches, half a million, it will be in and out in a few days for us it's just and it's scary actually because you think oh cool what does if the music keep, stops does it ever keep does it ever keep you up at night do you ever wake up and go oh blimey not a lot keeps me up at night but it's, if the only thing that does keep me up is is just making sure you've got enough cash flow around you all the time how much do you how much as like a buffer do you not think enough. Is? <laughs> my buffer um in all honesty is commercial property because I just cannot keep loads of cash in the bank. It just freaks me out. Yeah. So I want to make sure that owning this place and owning next door and millions of other pounds worth of commercial property is my security element to keep me sane. That that, that's not cash flow, though, is it? Like, is you need no, but you can you can borrow yeah. off of it. Can't oh, you? fair you, enough. You, you could yeah. sell one. Yeah, you know, it's gone up in value. Yeah, you know, it's I, fairly quick to liquidate it or make it an asset. That yeah, or you go to bank. Look, I really need this. I'm in trouble, but. Is a million pound unencumbered property of that, you know, help me out. And if you did have to go to a bank, say, look, we've had a bad trading period or somebody's not, you know, on like in Dan's example, we were on 30 day terms, but they've knocked it to 90. If you go to that bank and say, look, we're, we're a little bit tight, does that change the relationship? If you've got a good relationship, but a lot of people don't even know who their bank manager is and they've got to ring a call centre, they'd have no bloody clue what they're talking about, would they? Yeah. So that's the problem with these sub-5 million turnover businesses. They don't have any relationship with a one-to-one -one person that knows how many beans make five. Yeah. A computer's decided. It's as very a, difficult. As a summary then for Dan, because it seems like he didn't necessarily want the advice that was being dished out. If you're in his situation there... With core four as it stands at the moment, two big clients but or what, customers. I thought, a couple I of thought he here. didn't want all the consumer space because it was all, you know, it was not profitable. But he said it is actually it is more profitable. profitable. Yeah. Um, 
but it's all about he's worried that his staff are going to take their clothes off and walk around like Magic Mike. But you just tell him, no, don't it's do not that. not what he said. That. <laughs> no. You've made that vision yeah. yourself. No, but, I mean, but he's got highly professional when yeah. he's doing big footsy stuff in London. But you want to take that highly professional approach into your consumers. Yeah. We'll give you a real point of difference. Real point yeah, of difference. Yeah, it could be a great USP, yeah. Uh, my biggest advice to him is order more cookies. <laughs> And send them out <laughs> and see the results. Absolutely solid advice. For my p &L. Solid advice. <laughs> to help his p &L. Well, if you have enjoyed this podcast, do let us know. If you're watching on YouTube, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment as well. We love reading the comments because there's loads of stuff. After the episodes go live, there's lots of people who are also business owners and entrepreneurs yeah, yeah, who are yeah. chipping in with like, I would do this and I would do that and I would do the other. Yeah, yeah. Um, people offering advice to each other. I think, you know, there won't be long till lots of business is being done within the comments as well and people um, picking up from businesses over there, which I think is very exciting. If you are listening on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher and all those other flipping platforms, if you can, give us a like and leave us a comment i know all podcasts like please leave us five star review but it actually really 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 helps the algorithm loves that kind of stuff and they like to know that you guys are actually enjoying the content that's being made and we'd like to have a big thank you to partypieces.co.uk for all the personalized gifts uh that they're providing Here you go. Do you want to businesses give us the, the pitch world. give us a pitch go yeah so if you want a personalized cookie or a personalized balloon uh or a personalized teddy bear a personalised gift at partypieces.co.uk is the place to go. Even personalised cards. <laughs> that was actually very good. Well done, you. Thank you. Where do you get all these jingles from? That's all I do. Do you just go to the 1980s and yeah. find them? Yeah. Mm. There you go. I think if it makes me laugh because I'm quite juvenile, I'm like, well, ill like that. Yeah, obviously. Ill like that. Um, well, thank you for listening. Cheers for your ears, as they say in Radio Land, and we'll see you for the next instalment of the Business Broadcast. Make sure you like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. That sounded a bit threatening. Yeah, do it though. Bye. Bye bye.